Have you ever wondered if there's a way to put a mix on autopilot? In this clip, Joey and his mixing assistant, Nick, discuss their new approach to mixing that they call automatic mixing. Joey describes their signal chain and how he leverages modern plugins to help him achieve the epic mixes he is known for, but also take it beyond that. Enjoy. So instrumental bus, we showed the track spacer. That's yep. layer one. That's for, for the vocals. Yep. So on top. Then we've got uh, just a little high-end bump here at 12,000 hertz, just to give it some more sheen. Okay, this is huge. Yeah. This is a big deal. All right. So this is carrying on the the theme of auto-mixing, right? We've been talking about auto-mixing, where you have Suze taking care of some of the EQ decisions automatically for you. You've got Trackspacer taking care of some of the volume. This thing is cool, and... Uh, I didn't even know about this until Nick was showing it to me. It's called Sculptor. I would say it's very similar to like the hi-fi button on your stereo system. Did like it, when didn't, you just, hey Nick Pilata, didn't someone just use Neutron? I feel okay. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Keep going. It's a cool. It's plug called in. Neutron. It's Neutron you, three. Yeah. Neutron three, and you can add modules right and you can set up your own little thing in here but all we're doing with it we got some eq which is mixed in parallel right yeah which is not a big deal i mean that's not doing a ton of stuff what's really doing a lot is the sculptor and i don't really know what's going on here because i didn't program this plugin but it's badass so <laughs> show it with and without the sculptor because it it's insane how much of a difference it makes yeah. Is it on? Just to exaggerate what it's doing. So. so this is an exaggerated. We've got it at a hundred. I think in the final mix it was at thirty. Yeah. But in the, just to show you what it's doing, put it on a hundred and then just like play. I don't know, play the breakdown, the chorus, yeah. anything. You can see that what it's doing is, it's just hyping the mix, mm -hmm. but it's doing it dynamically. It's not like a static hype. Yeah, it's, that's why I really love it. Yeah, again, it, it, it's like automatically mixing the song for you, kind of. <laughs> it's really cool. Um, so there's that. And then it goes into this uh, OG compressor. <laughs> the VBC. Oh, yes. You could kind of see it like it only reacting to the snares. Yeah. But it it puts a nice little uh, pump. Yeah, it just keeps the snare from like poking out all the way through the mix. Yeah, so. I like that little pump effect it has. Yeah. Then that goes into the master bus, and the master bus has one little layer of auto mixing going on too. We're gonna show that. So, of course, we're gonna use the SSL comp. It's my favorite compressor. <laughs> Let's get everything playing. And just 2 dB is all you need. It's just enough to glue everything together and make it nice and fat. Um, then it goes into max bass. And this is just a, once again, try to maximize those, those uh, low end frequencies and bring those forward into the smaller speakers. Yep. Then we get into uh, another slightly auto mix kind of thing, which we use a linear phase multiband compressor to level out the individual e uh, e equalizer frequency ranges um, so that they're more even with each other. Yeah. It's like if, if, the, if the song starts to get out of control in, let's say, between 128 hertz and 500 hertz, that compressor 
is there to push it down without destroying the other parts of the mix. And so you can see it's not moving very much, but it's doing enough to... And, and like when I watch that visually and, and know in my head, I know in my head what's going on in the song. Like, for example, in that breakdown, there's a bass synth. Mm -hmm. uh, could we show that? Yeah. You can see that it actually reacts to the bass synth coming in. This guy. See how it. Go ahead and stop. Yeah. See how it pulls it down and doesn't let it take over the mix that's so important to have these these fail safes throughout your mix because it's like preventing you from from basically fucking it up i mean yeah. it's like you can throw anything you want into the mix but it's gonna just it's just gonna be like nope you, you have too much there i'm gonna push you down a little bit and so by having the track spacer layers the multi-band compressor the soothe it the, the song can't get out of control no yeah. matter what we do to it and that's really kind of the the magic of what we've been doing now versus what we used to do uh and then it goes into ozone and this is the if you guys have watched any of my nail the mixes this is still the same yeah it's the same settings just the new version <laughs> we've got the same eq same imager same exciter same maximizer but for those of you who haven't seen it we can just show it yeah EQ is not even doing anything. EQ is nothing on this one. Uh, sometimes we'll use that EQ stage as a final mastering EQ. So if we need to add a little more high end, we'll do it there. Yep. Um, on the imager, we're just using this to uh, make sure that the low end is mono. We don't want the low end to to go stereo at all because it, it's more powerful in mono. Yep. So anything below 120 just gets centered. Centered. Yep. <laughs> Then we're uh, adding a little bit of tape saturation on the exciter, a very small amount. Point one, point one on the low end, point two in the two mid bands, and point five in the high end. Uh, this is to, I guess, make it sound more like an analog, because mm -hmm. the digital can be harsh, the digital can be a little sterile. So this exciter with the tape mode uh brings back a little more analog mojo to it i guess and then of course the maximizer is set to just make it loud and proud yeah. and these are the settings i mean we, i've been using these settings for like a decade like they just work with whatever you're doing pretty much <laughs> and that's that's literally it that's the whole song. 